All right, so I'm back at my usual hunting spot, the one I come to for rabbits. But uh, today we're gonna go after coyote. It's not something I really have experience doing, but um, you know, I've been hunting rabbits out here a lot. And the last time I came out here, I walked up on three separate coyotes. I got within 50 yards of them. So I figured I'd come out here and give it a shot now. Right when I got here, there was coyotes howling already. And it's a little bit later in the morning. I wasn't here at sunrise. But there was about, I don't know, five or six coyotes howling at each other. And one of them was in the creek bed right by the gate. He was only like 100 yards off. But there's two people in tents camping right at the gate because it's public land. You can just pull off and camp on the side of the road. So... It was kind of like, I could take a shot, but legally, but is it really the right thing to do? Like, just terrify some people that are camping, so I'm trying to be quiet. Um, that guy ended up seeing me, but that didn't stop the rest of them from howling. And They were howling basically out this direction. It sounded like there was a big group over there, maybe some even fighting. And then one or two on their own over here. But there's three spots that I dotted over that I want to try to make stands at. I have a game caller. It has a little decoy on it. I have my rifle. Um, yeah, but the stands I wanted to do are more into the next valley. But hearing so many sound like they're moving around right back here. I don't know, I'm trying to be quiet. I'm trying to keep my eyes open and we'll see. Once I get down in the next creek bed, I'll make a decision. But I really hope I at least see something back here. Because this is a lot of hiking, a lot of distance covered. You know, most of the guys I watch on YouTube, they uh go to some orchard or something and they just drive their truck and hop out and call right next to the truck and then get back in the truck drive to the next stand and that's how they do it Which sounds a lot easier but just not really how it is out here yep this is where he was hanging out in last time but Up to spot him in here. Okay, something just ran. It could have been a rabbit. Whew. This stuff is just so thick. worry about you know trying to stalk him I'm never gonna get close to him walking up if he knows I'm here you know I think I'll set my call down just right out here and then I guess I'll I don't know I could sit against that rock or behind it for cover I really I'm not sure
I showed on the GoPro, but this is actually kind of steep. Whew. Okay. Fucking sounds going in and out. Fucking thing, dude. Well, the decoy's going, but the sound keeps stopping. Getting all distorted, this fucking thing. This thing just stopped playing sound. That's not my goal, that's a, that's a coyote down there. This call just stopped working. I'm watching this coyote on this next ridge. And there must be a bad battery or something, but I'm watching this coyote right now. The decoy's still spinning. It's just playing no fucking noise. It's weird to hear one. I wonder what that means. <clears throat> I'm not comfortable making a 500 yard sh shot. I'm, I don't even know what. I don't even know how much drop that would be. Honestly, I don't. Yeah, even 300 yards would be a stretch for me. I mean, I could send one, but. I do have my phone, I could actually check my drop earlier. So let's see. Yeah, there he is.
is such a shame. This thing's brand new. I put all new batteries in it except two batteries I took out of a remote. But it, the first call I bought, actually, I returned two days later because the wiring was messed up. And I got this same one. And now I'm having these issues. It's kind of... He's moving down into the valley. He's running down here fast, though. another coyote calling from the left. Man, this would be so cool if I had someone with me that could help record and it's really hard to do solo. for him to come a little closer. He is really stuck on that point though. I wonder if it's the call that got him to come in. He was coming towards me, but now, it's once they drop into this stuff, I can't, I have no idea. And I just have to wait till he pops up. Hopefully he pops up a lot closer. I think the call brought him in. Cause he was way, he was behind that far ridge. I don't know how far coyotes can see. Maybe he saw the decoy from this far and it interested him. Because he did look towards me when I was making the kind of what noise. This is just so much landscape to look. You know, to look at. And he could be anywhere. change the battery in the GoPro, so I think I'm going to turn off for a little bit. If it pops back up, I'll turn it back on. He just popped up at 200 yards. I need to move a little bit to get a shot. So, I'm pretty sure I can see him down in that bush. I, he folded instantly, and he was down. Uh, 
I flinched a bit. I didn't see the bullet hit him, but I'm positive he's right there. I can, even without my scope, I can see him. He was exactly, he was like 201 and a half yards away. Whew, I got my rifle. I'm shaky. Got my rifle sighted in at a, I just sighted in my rifle the other day at about 100 yards. He was facing me. I held right on his, right on his neck. I figure, I think between 100 and 300, I probably only have like three inches of drop. But uh, that's the first animal I've shot at with this rifle. I really don't have experience with um, centerfire rifles. All my hunting is shotguns and like 22s. Um, so yeah, it, I mean, I never saw him move since the shot. He's been folded right there the whole time. I'm almost certain there was two right there. I didn't see where the second one went. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to walk down there. I wish I could have got it the shot on camera but man it is difficult to do two cameras by yourself and plus my call was malfunctioning i gotta go the decoy is still on but it's not uh none of the calls are working so okay i'm gonna put the head mount back on and uh grab my rifle i'm gonna walk down there see see if i got him yeah so i'm definitely glad i waited didn't try to take that 400 yard shot I need to find the best spot to climb down. I brought my rifle with me just because, I don't know, maybe I see another one coming out. Like I was saying, I'm excited for my first coyote. Um, it's been a long time since I even took a shot at a coyote. You know, I remember when I was a kid, sometimes we'd see him and my dad would be like, you, know, you got the 22 if you think you can hit him from that far. And of course he knew we, we wouldn't hit him. You know, iron sights when we're like 13 years old. I, I was a horrible shot. Not not a whole lot better now, but. Yeah, this is steep. If I'm going to drag him up here, it's going to be difficult. Is it? Ow, that got st This is the creek bed I totally wiped out another day, too. Freaking my back's just recovering from that. I think he was right, oh no, I thought he was right here. Oh, my trip. I thought I'd shot, oh no, I can barely see the side of the road. He must have been just right over here. Oh, okay. So I think I might, uh, yeah, I cracked him right through the top of the head, the neck, and dropped him instant. I'm gonna reposition him so there's not a ton of blood on camera and stuff. All right, so that's what I got. He's small, a little smaller than I thought. This is a little guy. Um, I guess it's a little hard to tell it, you know. Whew. At 200 yards through the scope, it's a little harder to tell. It's not something I'm really used to judging size on, but yeah, so I folded him. You can almost see, you can see the entry a little bit. It went right in through his neck. It blew out the backside and he's, yeah, he folded instantly. He didn't move. He was, yeah, so my first coyote. A small one, that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with my ability to shoot. I mean, it's only 200 yards, but yeah, man. First coyote ever. Been hunting since I was 13. I'm 28 now. Not bad. I'm going to get a few pictures with my rifle next to him. And... Yeah, a little compared to my rifle, man, but... So real quick, I have to use my phone so I can use the zoom, but this is where I shot him. He started way right there on the top of that ridge, calling like crazy. Came down to here, was calling for a while. Another coyote was answering further down. Um, then after a while, I don't know if he saw my decoy or what, but he, uh, he dropped down and he started coming toward. Initially, he was coming uh, like over here. 
then I guess he, this is where he popped up. He popped up right here. This is where I saw him. I kind of did a little woot at him. And then I was up, let's see, up there. Behind that, that big chunk of rock. I guess from here it's pretty hard to see anything behind there. Pretty good cover spot. But yeah, this was a good stand. I mean, considering... My call stopped working after two minutes of calling. The decoy stayed on, but the call stopped producing noise. So I'm happy. <sighs> All right, so I grabbed my collar. I sat down. I took a break. Um, it was pretty hot. My spot was in the shade, but I decided I think I'm going to be done coyote hunting for today. I think uh, one is good for me. I really want to be able to use that new collar I just bought but I think at least one of those batteries is bad. Eight of the batteries I put in there were brand new, and um, two of them were from my like junk drawer, basically, and uh, they were all the same kind, though. So I'm guessing that two of them were low on power, or maybe one of them was just bad. So I'd rather... Uh, I have extra batteries with me, but I'd rather go home, make sure I put all new batteries in it, ready to go for next time then sit out here and one by one take them out see how long it plays okay switch out different ones see how long it plays just gonna take forever and it's getting hot and there's a few other things i wanted to try today so if i uh i also don't want to put crazy pressure on this spot right now even though there's tons of coyotes out here because uh my brother's not a my brother's never gotten a coyote either. And I know he really wants to come out here and get one. So now that I'm a little bit more confident in my ability to at least find them, or maybe I'm just getting lucky. Um, I'd like to come out here maybe later this week and then I can use my camera, I can actually film a little better. This was more of a trial run when it comes to the recording. It's much harder than I thought it would be. It's not the same as the rabbits or fishing where you just put a GoPro on your head. Maybe you put your iPhone on shore for a wide shot. No, it's much harder than that. You have to zoom in. You have to follow a moving target while you're keeping them in your sights. And then you have to get them in your scope. It's pretty difficult. Um, maybe if I'd shot like a ton of coyotes in the past, I'd be more patient. But I wanted my first coyote, so, so I just went for it. Man, if I, uh, I'm not gonna call anymore. I still have a, what's well, about 9 a.m. right now. Um, I wanted to go shoot my 17 HMR a little bit. That'd be in a separate video regardless, but I'm not gonna call, but if I walk upon a coyote, yeah, I'll take a shot. I'll keep the GoPro on my head just in case, turn it on. Cause last time I walked up on two as I was walking out. So we'll see what happens this time. Um, as far as that coyote goes, I just left him there. I do want to try, I do want to try doing some stuff with the fur, because I've seen some stuff on like Reddit and YouTube that people make like hood liners and all types of cool like hunting stuff and pouches. Um, but this coyote was just covered in ticks and even though he'd only been dead for about five minutes, they were already starting to pop off him and crawl around and I didn't want to risk that. So, so yeah, I just left him there. But yeah, if it turns back on, um, yeah, I'll turn it back on. If I see another coyote on my way out, I'll try to be quiet. Um, but if not, this is probably the end of the video. All right.